That's the doorbell at Jimmy's house. Now when you come to my house, my doorbell sounds like this. Hey, welcome to the People's Weekly on People's Radio United. I'm Tim Best Buds. I'm here with Canadian Glenn and Steve Shagwell. How are you guys doing? I'm all right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm here. I'm feeling like shit. I was in a car accident uh, a few days ago, and so I'm uh, my body's beat up, and I'm recovering. I know. Yeah. Ugh. That's not yeah. good. But, but, but did anybody notice the good news is I've almost got the intro down so I can say the same exact thing every time and just alternate host names when when necessary. So, yeah, I'm getting good at the intro of this show. So someone coming in listening from the beginning will say this is very professionally done. <laughs> <laughs> Repetition makes yeah. perfection. It's, I'm very proud of myself for that. The first, the first five seconds of the show are awesome. We got to start somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, what's um, what's going on this week with um, the view up here, Glenn? Good question, Tim. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess I guess we're not going to talk about the view up here. Um, yeah, just as far as People's Radio, we're doing a lot more video stuff now. So follow us on YouTube, People's Radio United. Um, check out our website, People's Radio United dot com. We have two playlists up there, and we have a lot more stuff coming, video wise and radio wise. As I said before, it's getting closer every day. Um, just stay tuned and that's it for the view up here in people's radio for today. So now we can go on to the topics. <laughs> We're all over it. We're just flying by here. Yeah. I tell you, I tell you topics. It, it, you know, topics? it gets, it doesn't get any more professional than this. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So... And I am joined by my uh, my producer, Miao Moto. He's going to be very vocal today. My cat. Wow. <laughs> I, na- I named him after, you know, my favorite figure from Samurai, Miyamoto. He's Miao Moto. Get it? And Steve's going to be working the mute button today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, he obviously knows his name. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, this cat is a diva, man. There's no shutting him up. That's cool. He takes after his giant friend. Oh, hey now. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so white Trump supporters can be labeled as standard white nationalists, but non-white Trump supporters are a mystery. Why would anyone sell out their entire communities to support white supremacy? That's the first topic. See how I see how I segued that from cat to subject. Uh huh. Professional. Totally professional. Oh, I don't even know where to begin because, like, so many people who support Trump think there's no white supremacy going on, even though he's like had clan members on his cabinet and shit it's like well well here's the thing i was i was in beverly hills at the anti-trump rally and there was maybe 12 max trump supporters out there with their pro-trump signs their trump flags trump hats it almost seems like when they say they're patriots I mean, they didn't have American flags. They had Trump gear and a big giant Trump flag. I wonder. I wonder who they're patriotic to. You know what I mean? But anyway, only a, f- a handful of them were like I think three to four of them were white. There was a dude that, that looked like he was Indian. There was a lady who said she was Mexican. Um, she spoke Spanish. 
There was some other dude that didn't look white, but he wouldn't tell me his race. He was ashamed to say what his race was on camera. Uh, it was none of my business. There was a couple Mexican people. One car drove up. Some girl jumped out with a giant Trump flag and started posing for pictures, and it said Latinas for Trump. Then they got back in the car and drove off. Because uh, what happened was, wherever the Trump supporters were, wherever those red hats were, or the Trump flags, all the media was over there. It was insanity. Like that's they wanted. I was I was trying to scream into their to their mics just to shut down whatever the Trump people were saying. But they like everyone, even independent media was rushing these people to get their voices. I'm here talking to activists, but they're talking to Trump supporters. It's ridiculous. Well, you know, the I guess the first thought that comes to mind is um, they you will find people who sell out their own communities at any point in history. I mean, you know, there were there were Jews who were turning in their fellow Jews during World War Two, you know, so I think um I, I think I think that's that's got a lot to do with it. But you gotta understand too. I mean, there are a lot of white people who just want to pretend the white supremacy isn't there, and it would stand to reason you'll get a few minority people if you want to play Where's Waldo that want to pretend the white supremacy isn't there, because you know. Trump has, Trump is obviously, you know, at best, not discouraging white supremacists from voting for him, um, at best, at the very best. But, you know, there, there are other things that are part of the Trump package that, besides white supremacy, that look good to certain people. You know, if you really believe Trump's going to put America first... You know, I mean, stuff like that. So, I mean, you will find you will find people who do that. Um, I'm not surprised at all, but there's such a small number. You, you like anybody with half a brain knows these people are the exception, not the rule, and they're one hell of an exception. And the fact that these people, these these, you know. Latinas showed up and they like popped out in their MAGA gear, talked to some reporters and left. It's almost like they knew where the reporters were, showed up, talked to them as if somebody had told the reporters, hey, these people are coming. You know, I mean, it just it kind of sounds set up like maybe people were being paid to be something they're not. Would these be the elusive Adelson checks <laughs> <laughs> oh man but yeah it's I just it just was shocking there were these two black women standing out there one of them said uh, black people don't support DACA we're immigrants um, vote for Trump vote for Christians vote for all you know I just went down this whole list of vote for no abortion vote for this and that another one said blacks for Trump really big and I'm like it's just they weren't they weren't talking to media and they weren't acting belligerent like some of the other ones so I didn't really talk to them I took a picture of one because it was just so ridiculous black people shouldn't support DACA blacks for Trump um, everyone should support DACA everyone should support immigrants humans are humans and no matter where you're from you have rights just because of where you're born doesn't give you any extra human rights than anybody else. Fuck what they taught you. Well, it's the same old dynamic. I mean, you know, it's like it's like the sarcasm about the evening news. Billionaires telling millionaires to tell you that you have problems because of the poor people. 
you know, it's just the same old shit. And as far as the, I know this is a harsh word, but as far as the tokens go in the visible minorities, it's a role that is sought by politicians of all stripes to have those people in your entourage. And there's no shortage of people willing to fucking do it. So, you know, it's just part of the political process. Um, what's changed, I think, is like you said, you know, Hoochie Mama, MAGA, MAGA, and there's all the cameras. And just like a modern campaign puts on the performance for, you know, whatever, five, eight minutes back in the car, gone. You know, it's there's nothing spontaneous about any of this shit. I think that's the thing that is maybe a big warning sign. Yeah, all she this, was every everything's fucking staged, man. Yeah, she was all dressed up like a you know like a model in a beer commercial or something. Oh, yeah. Um. But yeah, that I mean, everyone knew that that they were going to be there, that there was a protest there, and that's where the media is. But the thing is, all the media was surrounding these red hat people. You know, all of them, all of them, all of them. And I'm sitting here like there's so few of them. Why don't we just make them leave? You're not wanted here. But you also had all the liberals out there, the Democrats that want to debate these people and change their minds. No one's changing anyone's mind. These people have, have, have bowed down to racism. They've accepted that. They've accepted that white supremacy is what they want no matter what their race is. Well, I think this is one of the big misrepresentations that's that's going on in the u.s right now all these all this bullshit about the repression of free speech but just like you said tim these people who were maga who were out there they're not there to have a discussion they're there to show their team colors that's why they're there there ain't going to be any debate there you know so, I mean, this this is what we're getting all the time. If people actually got together to debate instead of to make lines and show colors, then, yeah, maybe it would be possible. But, no, there's nobody interested in it at these things. Yeah, I well, mean, you, oh, you know, oh, go ahead, Tim. No, I was just going to say it. it's ridiculous because I'm trying to scream into these mics so they can't hear what this cat's saying. And I'm the bad person. I have people saying, don't be so violent. Why are you doing this? And these are people supposedly on our side. This one lady kept saying, no violence. And I said, why? And she just said, because was her answer. And I told, oh, yeah. her, and I told her what I said on this show before. How many Jewish people in concentration camps do you think said, I'm so glad no one was violent against the Nazis early on. I'm just so glad about that. Not yeah. one. Not one, man. Come on now. And she didn't have no answer to that. She just kind of shrugged, like, whatever. <laughs> it, it, it's ridiculous, man. I'm screaming, fascists, go home, and everyone's rushing with cameras to film them talking. No one's even ready to fight. They're just filming what they have to say because they, they, they have an, a dispute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why are they well, there? This... Why are they allowed to be there? See, that's the other thing we don't know, though. It's... These camera crews and beat reporters that get sent out, they get sent with orders, you know? Yeah, those are, those are the mainstream people, man. But I was there. I was a camera yeah. crew. There were other people there that were just like me with their cameras, and they weren't. Well, I was interviewing activists. I was filming what was going on with the activists. They were, they were following these cats. You know what I mean? If I yeah. came around one of them, I got that one uh, video I put up. With, with me talking crap, you know what I mean? I wanted them out of there. No one was with me. Everybody was against me. Like, no, don't engage them. Don't, don't talk to them. Don't use violence. Don't tell them to leave. You know, debate with the fascists. They'll hit. They'll finally get your point of view. No, they had two cops following them around to make sure they were safe. Each one of them. It's ridiculous. How much yeah. tax money? They had undercovers all through the crowd. I know because I see the same undercovers all the time. Sometimes they're cops, sometimes they're undercovers. Yeah. I, I filmed one, called him out, walking around with an umbrella on a suit. I'm like, I know you. He's like, you don't know me. 
I was like, I do. And then I whispered to the camera, it's a funny video, I should release it. I was like, he's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. well Oakland I don't know. Got- you know, I'm really just getting tired of the alt-right with this whole, like, you know, our free speech, you know, it's it's because these are the first people where if I say anything that is not licking Trump's boot thoroughly enough for them, um, they'll shout me down, snowflake, cock, der, 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 what about her emails, Arr! you know, <laughs> and it's like they try to shame everybody who has a different opinion of them. And I realize some of that is going on on the left and I'm not a fan of that either, but you know, this is like a, it's a thing on the left. It's the thing on the right these days. And why, why, you know, like if you, when you talk about free speech and then you deny others, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and then you try to shame anybody with a different opinion. Don't you realize how stupid you look? I mean, I'm just I'm trying to wrap my head around this. I'm trying I'm not trying to be a dick here, but dude, like how do you not see what you're doing? How do you not see how stupid you're being? I I just it blows my mind. Well, you know, not like we've seen anything like this happen in a society before in history. Oh, God, no. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's, it's hand in hand, you know. I mean, if you, look, if you look what happened in, shall we say, Central Europe in the 1930s, there was a complete buy-in from government, from media, from industry it was a perfect storm and the population you know from weimar germany they were fucked anyway sounded good and hey wait a minute you know so i mean look what we're seeing now i mean media obviously is thinking about how much money each storyline will make before they even cover it these days Who can they sell it to? Who's going to buy the advertising for this news? That's what's wrong. And on the other side of it, how do we get them to cover us? What message do their advertisers want to hear? It just becomes such a circle jerk. And if people aren't willing to look below the surface, you know, hang on tight. Yeah, I just think there should be no safe spaces for Nazis, especially not in a group of people. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me just say this, especially not in a group of people who one of the hosting groups is actually named Refuse Fascism. They just shouldn't be allowed around and they shouldn't be protected by these people and the police shouldn't even be welcome, you know? I mean... I've seen things where police weren't allowed into to areas because they're not wanted. And that's how it should be. The police should have to stand around. You know, they're all taking pictures across the street. They're walking amongst the crowd. They're always going to have undercovers. But why do we want them mixed in with us? Why do we want these fascists mixed in? Go put them behind some police tape across the street over there. Keep them yeah. over You know, it, it just seems like, and then I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. These other little cats, they're the bad guys because they want to toss these fools out, ask them to leave. If they don't, then do it by force. Yeah. I, I see nothing wrong with that. It's just it's just crazy. And, and, and everybody else, all the liberals and revolutionaries and communists are, are cool standing around talking with them, having debates, filming them. What, when you film these people... Now, I'm not saying there were other people filming the other activists and stuff, too. I wasn't the only one. I'm not, you know. But but when you film these people and you release it on you, I don't care if your channel has one view or a million views. You're giving their voice credit. You know? It, it, it's just stupid. Don't give them a way to talk. 
shut them down, talk over them. You know, now if you if you if you did a nice interview and just edited that shit out, then fine, whatever. Just put up some some squealing every time they talk like a pig or whatever. That's cool, but don't let their voices be heard. You're contributing to the fucking problem. Well, it's nice to see that there are so many people interested in creating their own media for whatever reason they have. You know, the technology exists, never did before, does now, but, you know, it, it the brings problem. brings a whole new set of problems. Well, it does, but I mean, we've it's been, you know, five, six years now since it started to make an impact, and what do we see now? We see the platforms deciding whose independent work gets to be aired. This is the reaction from the system, you know? You guys have found a way to create, but we're going to control distribution. Yeah, but still, I just... Why, why even give them a voice on a small platform? Well, I mean, I've seen some people say that, you know, if this was a society that was evolving in any actual sense... Something like this would come along where suddenly neo-Nazis or white nationalists would get a voice and they would simply be laughed out of the public sphere. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I, I mean, there's, there's this cat out here in Maui and he's cool. He wasn't there, but um, he does a lot of these Nazi protests and he's an indigenous uh, uh, dude and he goes and he... He'll talk shit to him like, you know, this is my land. Y'all the immigrants. The fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? And he'll shame yeah. them and stuff. And that's different than debating. Like, let me hear what you have to say. He's telling yeah. them what's up. And if they react, he's ready to box with them sometimes. You know, yeah. he, he's like, we could take it wherever you want, but I'm going to tell you the way it is. And I'm not going to listen to your punk ass. And that's fine with me. But these people, were they weren't doing that. They were like, so, yeah. you know, why do you like Trump? Tell us about this and that. Because he's a yeah. racist. What? Why do? You, what further do you need? You know what you I know, mean. You uh, know, reasoning with Nazis and their allies was tried once before. You with know, this piece of paper, <laughs> and, and and there was and and six million people died. You know, and I don't want to hear because somebody always like. When I point that out, somebody's always like, well, what about communism? Communism has a higher body count. Stalin killed more people. Derp, 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 derp. Yeah, he did. I don't like him either. What's your fucking point? We're talking about Nazis. You know? Yeah, they always, try to, they always try to throw something in. It's like at the, yeah. the, at the same thing that these Trump people do. But Hillary, fuck Hillary. Fuck every president ever. What's your point? <laughs> Just deflection. That's it. That's all they got. You know? Ooh, Squirtle. <laughs> exactly. What about her emails? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Benghazi. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, how do you sum this up? Why does it go this way? Well, because, like everything else, I think it's monetized. These, these tokens that agree to stand against the best interests of their own communities, obviously, what are they getting out of it is the big question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when I interviewed activists, there were some people I didn't agree with that said things. I mean, I agree with them and we have the same goals, but they said some things um, about how awesome the Democrats were and stuff. And, and I didn't agree with that, but I let their voice be heard. Because at least these are people trying to, to make a better world for us. When, and we could debate the Democrat thing out, you know. And, and I won't censor stuff like that out. But, but if you're a fascist, why would I ever, ever give you a voice on any size platform? It just makes no sense. But anyway. Uh, I think there's something that has to be said for that other dude, the indigenous dude that you described. He gets in their face. 
he threatens them with power face to face. And yeah. that's that's what works in those movements. They respect that shit. You know, the discipline of fascist movements is the core of it. Well, and yeah, he, you know? nailed it on the head there, Glenn. These are people who love being told what to do. That's what they want in life. They want somebody to tell them what to do. Oh, I'll and tell them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will, Tim. Yeah, they want to be inspired by doing service for someone they deem infallible. They got to follow right. those orders. Wow. I don't know. I mean, you know, like I said, they're all, they've always been around. Like you said, Steve, they've always been around. They always will be around. It's just yeah. that, you know, I mean, like all the movies and everything that were made about capos in the camps and the sellouts in the Warsaw Ghetto and stuff like that. And what's, what's the message of history through those films? You get rid of your fucking spies one way and one way only. Yep. Yep. You know? People don't want to hear this, though. They're going to wait. I mean, that's the other thing I told that lady when I said, you know, wow, I'm so glad they didn't use violence against the Nazis, said no Jewish person in a concentration camp ever. <laughs> I also said, we're going to fight them now. We're going to fight them later. It's your choice. That's, and she just didn't say shit after that, but that's real. Well, you're absolutely right. And America has a really big problem with letting shit go until it becomes too big of a problem to manage. You know, it's, it's like the, the whole thing with the, um, extra judicial killings by police. You know, this was, this has been a problem and it's been a problem that's been growing. And now we're at a point where you can get shot by the cops just because you answered your door. Yep. No crime. No weapon. They'll shoot you because you answered your door. You granted that's not happening every day, but two years ago I said it would happen, and people said that was ridiculous. You know, and, and th they'll shoot you for giving you the for reaching for the wallet they asked you to reach for. <laughs> that that has happened on camera. You yeah. know, and it's like. It's like, what a fucked up situation to be in. You're being told to reach for your wallet, and you now, you know, we all know when you're told to reach for your wallet, you may be being told to do that so they can shoot you, you know? And look, I'm not, I'm not trying to dog on every cop out there, but there I is am. a big cultural... Am. There is a big cultural problem wrong in law enforcement, and it's gotten bigger, and America still hasn't done shit about it, and America just doesn't, America doesn't address problems when they're manageable, you know? And so, I mean, in another 10 years, America is going to be in crisis mode on all these fronts, because the shit's going to be way out of hand. And it's going to have gotten too much steam and too much power and, and gathered too much strength and ate too much of its Wheaties. It's, it's just not going to be able to be dealt with. That's why I'm telling people now, I'm like, get out, get out, move if you can. Well, uh, I, I would like to add that, yes, there was one reaction as this problem was growing. Uh, the government militarized the police. Yeah, that helped, didn't it? Oh, yeah. You know what? That kind of brings us into our next topic. The new war on drugs that Trump wants to start. And the Republicans, and probably some of the Democrats. Can death sentences and harsh jail time stop the opioid crisis? And will the government go after white billionaire drug dealers the same they do and did with poor black and Latino people who sell drugs to survive, like back in the 80s and the crack epidemic? Here's... Here's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, we're having like a school shooting a week now, right? So I think it's safe to say that assault rifles are killing as many kids roughly as opioids. Okay, so tougher laws against that aren't going to help 
say certain people, but those same certain people say tougher laws regarding opioids will help. I mean, the cognitive dissonance really just blows my mind. And I've been angry about this for a while, and now I'm just to a point where I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I don't care. You all have fun shooting yourselves or whatever, you know. But, I mean, that's what it is. That's that's what's going on is like people are people are saying in one breath we can't have tougher gun laws to stop guns from killing killing kids, but we should have tougher opioid laws to stop opioids from killing kids because one will work and the other won't. I mean, come on, you know, pick one or the other. You can't have it both ways. Hey, op- opioids don't kill people. People kill people. Who uh, people? who use opioids, kill themselves. I got it out finally. There you go. There you go. You know, all I'm going to say is the the government, and I don't know why the hell all these so-called libertarians can't get on board with this thinking. They're supposed to be about the government does not intrude on your shit. The government has no business telling you what you can and can't put in your body. If you die from it, that's your problem. Are people who take meth more prone to criminal acts? Well, yeah, I'd say they probably are. But, you know, they take meth, they commit a crime, you put them in jail for that crime. Taking meth is not a crime. You know, what they do is a crime. And, and hey, guess what? If you're more likely to commit meth or commit a crime when you're on meth, I advise you not to do meth, (laughs) you know, but you can go ahead and do meth and you're more likely to commit a crime and wind up in prison. That's on you. You know, I, I just, the government has no business telling us what we can and can't put in our bodies. And I understand like some people feel very strong about the idea that drug dealers should be taken out of the picture and they should be punished severely because I know people who have watched family members waste away from that shit. I know people who have had, you know, experienced violent crime as a result of that shit. I get it, you know, but if we just, if we took violent criminals and kept them in prison instead of letting them out so that we could put people who took drugs and did nothing else in prison. (laughs) That might go a long way. Yeah. I thought if drugs were legalized, there wouldn't be half the crime involved in them that there is now. So there's that. Well, Well, yeah, no, there wouldn't. I mean, how many people have been murdered because they were a snitch or somebody thought they were a snitch. You know, um, think about that. How many people have been murdered because they were selling drugs and somebody said, no, I get to sell drugs there. How many people were murdered because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time because two crime lords were fighting over who could sell drugs. And let's be real here. Like who are the real peddlers of opiates? It's not... It's not your it's not your baggy pants dr- drug dealer on the corner. The people really pushing it in mass, the people who created this problem are the big pharma drug companies and also the CIA because hey, it's a matter of public record that the CIA flooded um, America with cocaine and crack. You know damn well all of a sudden we've got these um, poppy fields in Afghanistan, and all of a sudden we're flooded with opioids. I mean, it's the CIA and Big Pharma. If we're going to execute drug dealers, we need to start there. Well, <clears throat> it was just a few weeks ago now that I did a show about the, the opioid crisis and more specifically fentanyl. I knew the numbers were bad but I didn't know how bad. Um, There's never been anything like this. Uh, You can think about the crack overdoses in the early 80s, plus as bad as the AIDS epidemic ever got, 
You put them together and you're about half the pace for the same point in time as the opioids are. It's going to get a a lot worse yet. And Canada has done more than most. We haven't decided to start executing people who are caught. The first things they did was eliminate every sort of equipment that could be used to press it into pills or put it into capsules in the country. And then they completely changed the importing rules from China, which is where it's all coming from. So, you know, that's too complex for a government like Trump's. So this is the sledgehammer on butterfly effect. Let's just threaten to kill people who are the personification of the problem and we'll pretend the problem's going away. Well, yep, that's part of it. And the other part is, you know, look at the DSM. It spells out the different mental health disorders and what they are and read about psychopathy and you will see so much of donald trump in there you know he loves his rules and he actually loves violence and he loves the state inflicting violence on people and i've known people who are like this they're just they're angry and they want to see people who they feel whether they're right or wrong are doing society harm they want to see them punished severely and it's not to protect society it's because they want to see punish people punished severely they get off on that you know and that's 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 donald trump in a nutshell yeah you know just he gets off on the idea of police kicking in people's doors and police you know, he gets off on the idea of summary execution. These are, you know, this is shit. He goes to bed and dreams about at night. Well, then that's just another reason to affirm that he is the perfect fascist puppet. Because the other thing to consider is the industries that depend on people being sent to jail. And they're huge. And they create a lot of fucking revenue and you know nobody wants to just shut that down yeah you know you know what you what you're talking about earlier too glenn another reason the opioid situation is worse than the crack situation was is because one is deemed legal and it's run through billion dollar companies uh, manufacturing it on a mass scale, unlike crack, you know what I mean? Uh, crack crack was made to destroy certain communities, mainly the black community. Mm-hmm. Op- opioids, they're everywhere. They're like everywhere from from because they're cheap, you know what I mean? Poor people can get them if they want to get high. Rich people well, have them. They get them from their doctor, le- quote unquote, legitimately. And their doctors get to go get cash prizes and vacations from these giant pharmaceutical companies who encourage them give these out to as many people as possible find as many you know they list all these different things what it's good for like one pill could be good for 20 different ailments and then the side effects are insane you might need another pill to to subside the side effects you know and so on and so on well this is the second epidemic in drugs we've seen just basically sweep across the landscape it didn't matter on a societal level it didn't matter about race it didn't matter about income that's what happened with meth oh yeah yeah opiates are doing the same thing but i mean what we're starting to hear about more and more is at first fentanyl was basically put into heroin and other heavy depressants just to give them a little kick or to make the product go further. But now more and more we're seeing lethal doses of fentanyl in stuff like cocaine. Wow. Yeah, and anybody who's buying cocaine is not looking for the effects of fentanyl. 
Right. So it's you know it it's getting out of hand and threatening to put people in jail or execute them. Oh man, it's not helping anything. Not a thing. All we have to do is look back in the U.S. history to prohibition of alcohol. How many people were getting slaughtered and murdered by mafia? You know, mafia um, kind of stuff going on, gang wars. It's the same yeah. thing. And then it's legal now. I don't see Seagrams and Miller shooting it out in the streets anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, but, you know, the war on drugs is, what, it's almost 50 years old. And what has it accomplished? Where are we today? You know, we are way worse off since the war on drugs started. We are less safe from criminals. And we are less safe from the government. Because they're kicking in people's doors over drugs and, you know, just destroying their homes and, and, you know, I mean, and, and just taking people's shit. Oh, I suspect that you are involved with drugs. I'm going to take your home and your car. No, I'm not. And I'm going to go to court and I'm going to prove it. Okay. And, and judges have done this. They have been like, well, yep, you are definitely innocent of this. Okay, can I have my stuff back now? No. That's correct. So that's what the drug war has gotten us. We are less safe from criminals. We are way less safe from our government. We're just less safe all around. The drug war has not made anybody safe. I'm curious, Glenn, because I know you do a lot of research and analysis and that sort of thing. You know, you definitely have more information than I do. Have you ever done an analysis of the kind of the typical cost of um, incarcerating somebody and putting them through the, the criminal justice system as opposed to rehabilitating them? Oh, yeah. Any, well, I mean, it's, it's hard to find head-to-head -head data, and that's no accident. But mm -hmm. uh, when, when you can find stuff, rehabilitation is shorter on average than imprisonment even though most people in canada only spend one third of their sentence behind bars rehab is still shorter it's a lot more uh, uh cost effective to run even though the people working in it are you know people with college educations doctorates it's still cheaper to run per person than a prison it's a massive saving but and then we get their potential too, right? We get that person's potential. They're not rotting away in a prison. They're out being productive and well, contributing. Well, the biggest really fundamental question about why there's no change in official mindset is because if you start to allow treatment facilities to deal with addiction with a forensic background. So people who commit crime because they're addicted. If you do the intelligent thing and put them in an environment that's not behind a fence with barbed wire, and, you know, you, you deal with it that way, you teach them discipline, and you clean them up. And then the real world is just outside the door. It's not outside the fence and 30 miles to town it makes such a big difference right off the bat. And that's where these studies say that most of the money saved. These people are ready to reintegrate now. They're not ex-convicts. Right. You, you know? But again, you know, then we're stepping on the toes of steps in the current system. And yeah. especially in the U.S., there are counties that would be dead without the way the prison system works. They have yeah. no no business if there's no prisons. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying violent offenders need, don't need to be separated oh, yeah. from society. You know, they do. But this is the fact. Violent offenders are not really being separated from society. They're being separated from society for a very short time and it's because we're putting nonviolent offenders 
in prison. So we have no room for the violent offenders. So everybody's getting out early and violent offenders are doing it again. I mean, it's just, none of this makes any sense. This is the literal definition of insanity, doing the same shit we've been doing for 50 years and expecting different results. Well, we just get more of the same and it gets worse. Tam? Hello. I thought, I, thought, <laughs> I, I heard you, Glenn. I thought you were going to talk, so I was waiting. I didn't want to cut you off. Nope. I, I, I've cut you off three times today in my strive for professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, let's switch topics now. Okay. Did I did I send that in chat by accident? Maybe <laughs> the, the U.S. is continuing to criminalize. Pro, um, ah, the U.S. is continuing, continuing to criminalize property by making it illegal to sleep in a car, replacing bus benches with uncomfortable metal angles seat, metal angled style seats with no rain covers, to police forcing people to move their, them and their families and all their belongings at 3 a.m. in the morning. I got through that, but it didn't sound very professional. So this is where the the show takes a dive a little bit. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I mean it. We're criminalizing being poor, at least in the United States, and I don't know what to do about it. Well, again, I mean this is a common feature in, uh, say, uh, Germany. At a certain time, in Spain at a certain time, in Greece at certain times, pretty much anywhere that's had a fascist government. Um, when you start making behavior a criminal act, you're going to have an issue. Um I don't know how long this can go on before there's a serious backlash. I mean, I have seen the odd town or city or county pass something about you can't feed the homeless, you can't do this, you can't do that. And they have had to roll it back. But then there's just as many counties or cities who have passed laws like this and they start arresting people all the time. And they're just yeah. like, fuck you, fuck you. We passed the law, it's the law, that's it. No change. So... I don't know, man. I think this is insane. If you don't like people sleeping on the bus benches, quit making homeless people. Exactly. But, I mean, let's just think about the uh, bus riders. Like, you know, if you care about your citizens, they got to stand out there in the rain now with no cover because you're so spiteful and hateful. You didn't want any homeless people to maybe be able to have shelter right there. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean... Where I live at in Wichita, I live two blocks from a homeless drop-in center. And so, I mean, there is homeless people all around me. All I mean, I when I walk out the door, I'm guaranteed to see a homeless person walking by. These people, as a general rule, are not dangerous. They There is no reason... There is no way that them taking shelter in a bus shelter is putting anyone in danger any more so than some drunk guy who walked out of a bar. Yep. You Probably know? a lot less so maybe too in a lot of cases. A lot. I mean, don't um, get me uh, wrong. I mean, uh, there are people, there are people who are homeless because they just can't function. And so they wind up homeless because of mental illness, you know, yeah. and so the, they'll act out. And yeah, that could be a little bit of a public safety issue, but you know, so can, so can the guy walking out of the, the sports bar, you know, he can be just as much of an issue. So, I mean, this is just, you're right, Glenn, you said it best, or Tim, you said it best. It's cruel and it's spiteful and it's so cruel and it's so spiteful. You don't even care if you create inconvenience or danger for other people. You're so hell bent on creating um, inconvenience or danger 
for homeless people. Yeah, let me just say, you know, there might be homeless people with mental issues. I mean, homelessness, I believe, causes mental issues. Um, but people treat them and degrade them like crap every day. They ignore them when they talk, say something. Even if it's asking for money, you can say, no, I don't have something. Even if you do and don't want to give it to them, you don't have to say, oh, screw you, get a job, you filthy bum, and laugh at them. I've seen somebody's feet bleeding, walking across the street almost in tears with ripped up clothes, and these girls are walking by laughing at them. I mean, people, a few years back in L.A., someone was going around to homeless camps and pouring gasoline and lighting homeless people on fire. Yeah. Homeless people get beat up a lot, you know. It, it, if you're well, mentally ill and you're messing with people and not even in a violent way and someone just knocks you out to be funny for a YouTube video, I mean, there's a lot of danger to homeless people. Yeah, and we're going to have more of that because, I mean, people do tend to, like, a society tends to imitate its leader, and I've definitely seen more of this. You know, we, we have a president who part of his whole shtick that got him elected. So you can't totally blame him because like people, people wanted this is insult and cruelty, you know, now granted, you know, I talk shit and I insult bands, but it's a joke and I'm not the president of the United States. You know, if I were the president of the United States, I myself wouldn't do that. But, and we can talk about, did Trump cause all the cruelty or was Trump elected because we've just become that cruel of a society? You know, um, I don't know the answer to that, but we're definitely going to see more. People are definitely, you know, homeless people are definitely going to get fucked with more. And it's sad yeah, it's, it, it's terrible. It really is. And um, while we're on this, let's just add this to the to the next topic as well, which is immigrants who are treated equally as bad. Um, neither neither homeless person or uh, or immigrant or an uh, undocumented immigrant has um, the respect and dignity from some of these people. Even, even, even them women that I don't know if you guys saw the video. Those women that went into a mosque. These white racists told a kid to put the gun in the car because there was a no fun. Ripped stuff up and assaulted some guy. And we're talking about Sharia law in America. And they were also bashing Mexican people too. Yeah, and and you know what's ironic about that is I have lots of Mexican people in my neighborhood. I've also lived in other neighborhoods where I was surrounded by Mexican people. Those are the people, those are the hardest working people. Those are the people who keep to themselves. I mean, like, I know we're not supposed to make generalizations about race, but I'm sorry, man. I've like every, every neighborhood I've lived where there've been Mexicans around, they mind their own business. They go to work. They work hard. They take care of their families. Like, they are the last people I'm afraid of. But hey, I guess we need a scapegoat, right? Well, I mean, Latino culture is community-oriented, unlike American culture. Yeah. Um, that's self-oriented, do for self, screw everybody else. Not to say there's not people who are community-oriented here and, and, and they're vice versa, selfish. But I'm saying... Community and family are more important in South America than they are in North America. Well, I don't know how, how Canada is on that, Glenn. I was going between us and Mexico. <sighs> well, the legalization through expiration of existing law and executive order and indifference from the Department of Justice to create this machinery to be able to do this in the United States. Any parallels I can think of are not flattering at all. 
we we've hit this all day today. The same theme. The, the parallels are scary. Any way you look at it. Um, I mean, this this is this is a federal task force, military, and they take their orders from the top. And that's, you know, considering the way the U.S. Constitution is, that's a little bit of a problem with the states. Maybe you guys should try reading that fucking Constitution, Trump. But, you know, I, it's scary. And everybody should be scared. Because, because when those APCs and those agents in Kevlar with assault rifles come take all the different colored people and nobody does a fucking thing about it. When all those people are gone, who's next? Oh, they, they'll never take the white people. They'll never take any white people. Right. Yeah, just wait. Well, you know, that's the whole thing. Like now there are stories coming out where people who are U.S. citizens are being snatched up yep. by ICE, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it, there were Mexican people out there. There were Latino people out there. There were Salvadorian people out there. And they were all, you know, Trump supporters. How? Maybe, that, How? maybe that's, that's their angle, man. They're trying to make sure ICE don't come to their fucking door. No, these people... I guarantee you, they thought they were better than undocumented people, because I, I, well, I, I heard I heard them say before at other things when they're, when they're arguing, you know, people are like, "But you're Mexican yourself. What do you hate your own people?" No, I'm an American citizen. They should go for citizenship. I don't want these criminals. They're criminals either way, just for being alive in this country. They're criminals. It, it, well, you know, these are their own people they're talking about. Well, you know, I think I think part of it is probably that they see the writing on the wall. They these are people who have achieved US citizenship and are afraid of losing it, so they want to be seen supporting the current regime because if uh if the current regime starts deciding, "Hey, citizenship don't mean shit we're just going to start going after who we want to go after they probably realize if that happens they're going to be the ones the current regime wants to go after first yep and let's face it it's a it's it's highly likely because a lot of shit is happening right now where i was like this is going to happen this is going to happen this is going to happen and people were like oh steve you're being dramatic you're being hysterical and now it's happening I've been saying that for 16 years, and here's Trump. <laughs> All right, uh, but yeah, but the thing is, these people—they're just jackasses. There's no, there's no, there's no fear in them of them being next or anything. They're just evil dicks. I think that's that's what I think, at least. They think they're superior to somebody else because of their legal status, or they were born here, or their ancestors were born here, so they're superior. That's what I believe it to be. Well, I think... Well, could be that. Could be a mixture, depending on the person, too. Who knows? But they may well, the, be sick. The fascist power structure is very regimented. So, I mean, you know, it does get to the point where if you're feeling some heat, maybe it's time to climb another rung. That's how it works. It does in most systems, but I mean, it's not so overwhelming, shall we say. Yeah, the people need to realize we need to stand with the people. Don't stand with your oppressors, stand with the people and realize who your oppressors are. Don't look at the oppressors as your protectors. It's just ridiculous thinking, man. Yeah, there's not a good history on that either. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> but I mean, is there, I mean, I've seen where some major cities have legally told the Trump government to fuck off with the sanctuaries and 
DACA and other things. I think California is pretty fuck Trump on this as well. There are a few other states. I'm supporting the secession. I mean, those states have every right under the Constitution to take the federal government to court. And once the case is accepted and it's underway, then that's another one of his actions that are dead in the water. Just like the the Muslim bans. Yes, pretty soon it's going to be Mexico, the United States, and two little countries. Well, one big country, one little country that are called CA. That's, that's what I'm hoping now. Well, I mean, I've said before, borders are now just sales territory lines. That's all it is. That's true, but I'd, I'd rather have California not under this United States federal government if possible. <clears throat> That would be that would be a big step in the right direction for the people here. To get it done without any sort of violence would probably take a decade. I'm serious. You know? What do you do about all the US military in California? Put them out. How do you boot out the entire facilities and stuff, though, you know, if we can't use it anymore, you're going to reimburse the U.S. government. You're going to build another one somewhere. How is this all going to work out, man? That's that's why countries like the U.S. Say, and Canada have so many separate states. So choose Black your loyal, man. choose your loyalty, U.S. <laughs> or California citizen. If you choose a U.S. military, then move the hell out of the state because your bases are about to be burned to the ground. Yeah, but that's the thing. They, they would attack California because it'd be too small. And nobody wants an army here. We just want to live our lives happy and cool and free. Another army, you mean? <laughs> well, I'm saying ideally, like if we were our own country, why would you want an army? Why would you want, you know, why would you want anyone to even attack you? That would just be stupid. Just do your thing, mind your business. But that's not how the U.S. works. They'll attack everybody. So, yeah. It, it's probably a fantasy of it being peaceful and beautiful and happy and free. But I blame the U.S. for that. Well, what do you, where do you guys see this? Some people have called it the American Gehaistatspolizei, the Gestapo. But... I think they're almost like a domestic Einsatzgruppen, but neither one is good. You're talking about ICE? Yeah. How far do you guys think this is going to go? I think it's going to keep getting worse. I think they're going to start picking up more and more people. It's become a regular thing. I mean, I mean, with the big sweeps, they've always picked up people. Under Obama, under Bush, everything, they, you know, they've been deporting, deporting, deporting. Yeah. Less, pe less people are coming in. Nobody wants to be here anymore. Are you kidding me? So, so the thing is, now it's all a big scam just to, just to lock people up and profit off of them. How long do they I, hold I, people before deporting them? I think that's where this is headed. I think, you know, ICE is, uh, I think ICE is, area of jurisdiction is going to be expanded so they're not just dealing with immigration enforcement. And I also think, meanwhile, as that's happening, Trump's going to move to, or whoever's after him, is going to move to federalize the various law enforcement agencies around the country and kind of bring them together. And I that, think that's where this is headed. That's the thing people were so scared Hillary Clinton was going to do, which she, she wanted to do. Now you got Trump doing the same thing, and a lot of these people are, that, that hated Hillary Clinton for it are okay with Trump doing it. Because well, no, yeah, no, matter, no matter what Trump does, it's okay. That's the big difference. Trump can succeed because he has the whole Blue Lives Matter tribe in his pocket. You know, nothing he does is unconstitutional as far as they're concerned. He could burn down a nursery 
and they would find a way to blame it on the, the babies in the nursery. No, they blame it on Obama. Obama, yeah, the, Obama was president first, and he didn't fireproof all nurseries, so it's his fault Trump burned the crap down. That's <laughs> how it would go. Antifa. Yeah, there you go. Antifa! It had to be Antifa, you know? Yeah. But, so that's, I mean, it's, it's just another thing that's getting so out of hand, it can't be stopped now, you know? I, I, I keep saying it, and I'm going to keep saying it. Get out. I'm already working on my exit strategy. You know, get yeah. out of this country, everybody. Yeah. I think we can let people in in our secret right now. There's about 300 um, people, me, Steve, and other Americans. We call ourselves um, the Glenn Clan, because if anything goes wrong, we all move in with Glenn. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we got our sleeping bags and marshmallows and hot dogs. Don't worry, Glenn. We're not gonna we're not gonna be an imposition on you. There'll just be three hundred of us in your living room. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be cool. We'll bring beer. Yeah, we'll have a bonfire on your sofa because the sofa mm. will be in the way. Three hundred people, come on. Where do you have room for a sofa? <laughs> So yeah, everyone meet up at Glenn's house and when um, all hell breaks loose here. We're going to Canada. Glenn's totally silent, like no, 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 this isn't happening. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just considering the thought. And it's like, okay, well, you better bring all the warmest fucking clothes you got. <laughs> really? You don't think three hundred people in one room is gonna keep us warm? That's a lot of body heat. Well, that's just not going to happen. We're going to need more than one room, obviously. But, you know. Glenn's like, I'm putting you all outside. <laughs> you can congregate in the neighborhood around the house. <laughs> I can get maybe 15 on the balcony. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so 15 people need tents. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Glenn has a Bel Air style mansion. It's like 900 acres, right? It's called it's called Gla Ranch Glen. That's that's it. news. That's news to me. <laughs> Rancho de la Canada. <laughs> Rancho de la Canada. <laughs> Dude, it's on. It's on. Oh, we're gonna turn you. We're gonna turn your place into a commune. <laughs> hmm. Actually, Rancho Mirage may be more accurate. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now Allah's trying to outdo Miyamoto. But anyway, yeah, I guess um, we hit all four topics. And we needed to do a shorter show today because it's our first um, show starting at 2 p.m. And I, I, I was unprepared. I have to get some rest before work in a couple hours. So my fault. <laughs> Anyone got no problem. A, anyone got got anything else to add? Um, I got, I got nothing. Are, is there any any new news from op domestic terror or op domestic terrorism? Just check out um, at Anani Info. Um, at Anani Info. For, or, or check out the hashtag op domestic terrorism. I know there's been a lot of. Um, Websites going down and Nazi sites being reported. You know they're we're, they're we're, doing a real great job. Those guys. We're and still. I encourage, I encourage anybody who's even mildly supported, mildly concerned about the alt right and Nazis to support op domestic terrorism. I mean, it's it's very legit. Yeah, we, we, our show, like I said last week, has been delayed. This happened the first time. It's nothing unusual. Um, it was due to opsec and some other little technical issues that arose, so it, 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 I believe it's going to happen soon, <laughs> I just can't give you guys an exact time yet, but it, it, when it does, when I know, I'll let everybody know, and we'll do the show. Fantastic. So cool, thank you Glenn, thank you Steve, and thank you listeners, um, see everybody next week. All right. Ta-ta.